Good evening. Tonight on the Beaver News, complications in a murder trial and a special news report on the Spring 2011 Festival. Those stories and more are coming up next. Welcome to the Thursday night edition of the Beaver News. We're glad to have you with us. I'm Max Newfield. And I'm Mackenzie Allen. A recent study shows evidence that couples with marital problems might be adversely impacting their children's sleep patterns. According to Oregon State University, this study, which was funded by the National Institutes of Health, specifically dealt with the effects marital problems might have on infants. Anne Mannering, a member of the research team in an Oregon State University, faculty member in the Department of Human Development and Family Sciences had this to say in response to the findings, quote, if sleep problems persist, this can correlate with problems in school, inattention and behavioral issues. Parents should be aware that stress in the marriage can potentially impact their children even at a very young age, end quote. In addition to Mannering, there were also numerous other research centers including the Yale Child Study Center involved with this study. Corvallis residents can sleep sound at night because they know they're in the safest city in the U.S. Megan Miller of the Daily Barometer writes that an analysis shows in the New York, published in the New York Times reviewed 379 U.S. cities and determined which had the lowest and the highest risk for being hit by natural disasters. The analyst, analysis <laughs> concluded that in the top eight safety to U.S. cities, with Corvallis being the first, followed by Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon and Cordes in Washington, Bellingham, Washington, Grand Junction in Colorado, uh, Spokane, Washington, Salem, Oregon, and at number eight, Seattle, Washington. So, if you want to move from Corvallis to somewhere else safe, you might want to consider Washington. The 2011 ISOSU Spring Festival took place last week. This annual event was an opportunity for cultural centers on campus to showcase traditional food, games, outfits, and dances native to their home country. Stephen Bowie, chief editor at KBVR-TV, brings a special news report on the event. My name is Vahag Nazaryan and I'm from Armenia and um, I'm a junior in graphic design at OSU and I'm the co-president of ISOSU, International Students of Oregon State University. This is an annual event that we put up every year um, and it's just to celebrate the different cultures that are represented at OSU and to show off our um, cultural pride and what we have to offer to the OSU and Corvallis community. It's a great event for engaging with the community and sharing cultures. Okay, so this is the CSA booth. And as you can see here, we have a gambling game played during the new year. And then we have a lot of cloth here and some coconuts and candy. <laughs> And this is all of our officers right here. Hi. <laughs> oh, and we have frog over there too that can make. <laughs> okay. Thank you for seeing, stopping by.
Okay, um, hello everyone. My name is Ada Chang and I'm the president of Hmong OSU. So Hmong stands for Hmong Minority Opportunity Nationality Group. And today here at the ISOSU Spring Festival, um, the theme this year is a season to remember. So here, one of our um, officers, Nancy Herr, drew this uh, mural for us. And basically, um, it's a picture of a cherry blossom tree. And along the tree, all the way till here, um, is pictures of members of the home club and uh, each like all the pictures like um, was taken during each season of the year so for example starting from here we have fall Halloween and then we have um, like Thanksgiving and our New Year's which is celebrated in November and then it goes into Christmas and all the way into spring right now so that's what this mural is about and um, yeah I don't know <laughs> I guess that's it <laughs> Hi, um, this is Kenneth Huang um, from Taiwanese Student Association. Our uh, name is CWSA as well. And I'm, like I said, I'm Kenneth. I'm the co-president along with Jimmy Chong over there. So today is a really nice day out here at the Spring Festival. And I would like to show you what we got here at TWSA's booth. This is a gun that made up with chopstick. And what we do is that we put a rubber, rubber band across here and so we can shoot at the target over there. That's what we do when we were a child. Like this is handmade and everyone is, should be able to make these ones. It's very interesting, you can see the structure here. They made with just a rubber band and a chopstick. Right over there, uh, what they are doing it's that there, there's an incense, it's called an incense game. And what we do is we put a ball or a coin on top of the container that has a tissue on it. And then we use the incense to poke the holes on the tissue. And it's a game of two people. Whoever let the ball or the coin drop first will lose the, will lose the game. And right over there. Uh, that's a game called shaking, shaking the, shaking your booty, and then so, so basically we just time you for 30 seconds, and then whoever get the most shake counts for will win. Anyway, uh, we also have this really traditional uh, product in Taiwan called pineapple cake over here. Sorry, um, and. It's really great. Um, as you can see, pineapple is a great product from Taiwan, and then people use a lot of pineapple in their food as well in their dessert. And this is one of the most famous product over in Taiwan. Well, that's pretty much it. I'll see you around. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Si Oisu from Spring Festival and uh, this program is about the Chinese traditional New Year celebration and this is the uh, minority dancing and song. Uh, we can see that it's very uh, full of joy and happiness. So uh, we wish everyone uh, a good New Year. <laughs> Robert Ho, and I'm, I'm part of the uh, VSA, Vimy Student Association. And uh, here we have uh, at the booth, we have, um, we offer uh, candies. We have the white rabbit candy, we have um, these haw flakes, it's like sugar flakes. And over here we have a game. It's called uh, or, uh, or fish shrimp crab. 
and the point of the game is to uh, bet, wager these candies we have here, and try to get, try to predict what the house is gonna roll. That's all we got. Shivani Joshi, I'm from the Indian Student Association, and here at our booth today we have uh, we're doing Indian sari tying, and so basically we're uh, we have these uh, many yards of cloth, and um, we're uh, tying them around um, the women who are coming to our booth, and we're doing it in the traditional way that um, the women in India do it. They tie it, and um, sari tying is basically. Uh, the sari is basically the national uh, women's um, clothing and so women in India tie this every day in the morning um, before going out. Um, so we're just giving everyone a, um, an experience of that here at our booth. take a short break, but when we come back, news on the Casey Anthony murder trial and your weather forecast for the weekend. Stay tuned. I got no pulse, we're losing him. Shock him, drives it real over time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. You were just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right, this isn't happening. He'll be fine. Eh? I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Shocking. When I have an asthma attack, I feel like a fish with no water. Learn how to prevent your child's next asthma attack. Because even one attack is one too many. Horseradish. Is that for horses? Remember me, Mr. Lobster? From last Tuesday? Banana. 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 Here comes the rain. We need a hat. <laughs> and why do we need a hat? Hmm? To stay dry. That's right. When you talk with your child, you build vocabulary. And learning starts long before school does. For more tips, go to bornlearning.org. So you can't save money? It's easy as pie. Brown bag and lunch instead of going out. $6 save times five days a week times 10 years is 21,000 bucks. That's a lot of lettuce. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. Carvalis, and welcome to your Thursday night edition of the Beaver News. Tell me a little bit about the history of music a la carte. United States, we believe that giving potential customers or cameras to Welcome back to the news here on Channel 26. Three out of four kids are not as secure as they should be because their car seats are not used correctly. But the latch system makes it easier to get it right and to hold your kids tight. Anchor, tether, latch. Learn more at safercar.gov. The elevator. And the blood bank. 
Both are ideas from the minds of African Americans. Support the United Negro College Fund because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Everyone has friends. There's online friends, friends to go out with on a Saturday night, friends to hang out with and do nothing, friends who show up on moving day. And then there are the friends who'll be there if someone is dealing with a mental illness. Are you one of those friends? Welcome back to your Thursday night edition of the Beaver News. Thanks for sticking with us. As the Justice Department looks into the BCS, the BCS is looking into one of their own. The Fiesta Bowl recently released a 276-page report on improper spending of funds by their former president and CEO. Due to the release of this report, the BCS has decided to allow the Fiesta Bowl to remain, but they will be forced to pay a $1 million fine. The NCAA, however, has yet to decide if they will continue to license this bowl, with the NCAA Vice President of Communications, Bob Williams, saying, quote, The NCAA Postseason Bowl Licensing Subcommittee will review the BCS report as it considers whether to reaffirm the Fiesta Bowl and Insight Bowl licenses for the coming season, end quote. In addition to its namesake, the Fiesta Bowl also puts on the Tempe-based Insight Bowl. Yesterday in Portland, a hazardous warning was sent out to all the local residents. CNN reports that a hazardous materials cloud from precision, precision cast parts on Johnson Creek Boulevard. The clouds sent four people to the hospital and prompted an order for residents within a half a mile to stay in their homes. Apparently, a hydrofluoric nitric acid combo cloud had leaked from the precious metals plant just before 6 p.m. The believed cause was a chunk of titanium that fell into a vat of acid inside the building. It created a chemical reaction after an electrical failure. But the all-clear sign was given at 5 a.m. this morning and workers could return to the plant. The challenge of filling a jury in the first-degree murder trial against Casey Anthony is getting more and more difficult by the day. The trial against Anthony for the death of her daughter Kaylee Anthony is expected to run for weeks if not months and because of this, Many jurors are citing hardships associated with being sequestered away from home for that period of time as a reason for release. Though some have been relieved because of this reason, including a hospital worker whose employer will not be able to pay her during the trial, the judge has not deemed all hardship cases as legitimate reasons for dismissal. The trial is expected to begin next week in Ontario, Florida. If convicted, Anthony could face the death penalty. Oil executives were put on the spotlight today and forced to defend themselves or have the tax breaks eliminated. The big five oil and gas companies set executives to appear in front of Congress as prices soar at the pump. All five of them acknowledged the rising fuel prices, but most of their testimony focused on the issue they were defending, which was a plan floated by Senate Democrats that would eliminate a raft of tax breaks. CNN writes that this bill would eliminate tax subsidies for the five largest oil companies, which were ExxonMobil, Shell, Chevron, BP, and COP, and direct these savings to pay down the deficit. The numbers amount to reducing the deficit by $21 billion over 10 years. The bill has little chance of passing, but analysis say that it is a move designed to put Republicans on the defensive 
and capitalize on public anger over rising gas prices. We now hand it over to Max Newfield for a weather forecast. Over to you. Hey there, Beaver Nation. I'm Max Newfield, your Thursday weatherman. Let's take a look at this weekend coming up. Friday, it's going to be partly cloudy. Enjoy it because uh, we're coming up to some rain. It's going to be a high of 66 and a low of 48. Saturday, get some showers with a high of 59 and a low of 47. Sunday, it's going to be rainy with a high of 58 and a low of 45. Monday, a little bit less rainy, but still some showers with a high of 60 and a low of 43. And Tuesday, there's going to be some more showers, a high of 63 and a low of 44. So break out those umbrellas. So it's going to be rainy. I'm Max Newfield, and back to you. We're going to take one more short break. Coming up next, living life on the edge in Toronto. You won't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Hall and I made suction tires. I used a rivet gun to connect the um, suction cups and then they, I just connected it to the tire. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your invention at inventnow.org. When you open a book, you can explore new lands, make new friends, and discover new adventures. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. Getting tested is the way to take care of their families. That's why real men wear gowns. For a list of the tests you need, go to AHRQ.gov. Welcome back to the Beaver News here on Channel 26. A man named John Demanouk was found guilty today of involvement in the murder of tens of thousands of Jews in a court in Germany ending over a 30-year trial whether or not he was a Nazi camp guard during World War II. German prosecutors accused him of being a guard at the notorious Nazi death camp of Sobibor in Poland and charged with being an accessory to about 27,900 murders that took place there. CNN reports that the 91-year-old farmer a uh, former Ohio auto worker was sentenced to five years in prison, but he was freed soon after the pending appeal. The court did not consider him a flight risk because he is, quote, not a citizen of, of any country and cannot leave Germany, end quote. This trial is likely to be the last of the major Nazi war crimes in Germany. The last body has been removed from the Sabinas, Mexico mine where an explosion claimed the lives of 14 workers. According to CNN, the Mexican Labor Secretary, Javier Lorenzo, announced this news via Twitter. The owner of the mine is coming under criticism from the Mexican government for a lack of safety precautions to prevent and deal with incidents like this. As the coal production center of Mexico, Sabinas and surrounding areas are not new to this sort of tragedy. In 2006, 65 miners were killed in the nearby town of San Juan de Sabinas after a similar explosion. An organization representing the families of those killed hopes the government will look at this tragedy and understand that more needs to be done to regulate mines and protect the workers. According to CNN, Libyan rebels have captured the airport in the besieged city of Misrata today. This 
Sham, uh, Shamsuddin Abdumullah of the Trans Transitional National Council said that the airport, located in the southwestern region of the war-torn city, fell to revolutionaries after opposition fighters nearby in Zlitin were able to join their counterparts in Misrata. A top UN official told the Security Council this week that two months of fighting and the ongoing shelling of the Misrata port had prevented most aid ships from docking there leaving the city at the forefront of UN humanitarian concerns. A ship carrying supplies from the International Committee of the Red Cross docked in Misrata on Tuesday, but the ongoing fighting has deterred many captains from trying to enter, enter the port. Valerie Amos, the UN Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, told the Security Council on Monday that almost 750,000 people have fled to the country amid the fighting. How much would you be willing to spend for the ultimate adrenaline rush? According to CNN, on June 1st, the CN Tower in Toronto will begin offering Edgewalk, an experience that for $175 per person will allow groups to dangle off the side of one of the country's tallest buildings. Here's how it works. Groups will be allowed to walk with limbs unencumbered along the five-foot pathway around the top of the 166-foot building while harnessed to a safety rail overhead. Edgewalk is designed to allow participants to, quote, push their personal limits, allowing those who dare to lean back over Toronto with nothing but air beneath them, end quote. Prior to being allowed on, all participants will be, will be required to pass a breathalyzer, and any that are deemed as acting out of the ordinary will be refused service. That's all the news we have for you tonight. Be sure to tune in next Tuesday at 7 p.m. for another live broadcast of the Beaver News. Thank you, and good night.